determining the probability of dependent events. That just means uh, events that depend on each other. So here, they have a box, and there are three pens, right? A pen, a pen, and another pen, and two markers, marker. And I like to draw these out, it just helps me visualize the problem. Two markers and one highlighter. Okay, so what do we want to know? Tara selects one item at random and does not return it. That's called without replacement. We're not replacing anything. She then selects a second item at random. What is the probability that para Tara selects one pen and then one marker? Okay, so what could happen? Well, um, you, you take an item out and you don't return it. So if you're finding the probability that Tara will, Tara will find one pen and one marker, first you've got to find out the probability of finding one pen, right? And then one marker, and then multiply that by the probability of getting one marker. But just be careful when you calculate the probability with the one marker. Remember, you're, you're assuming one pen has already been taken out, so it's going to be one less item in, in the bucket. And, and I'll go over that. So the probability of getting a pen is, is what? Well, it's there's three pens. That's, that's how many pens there are. Out of six, there's a half a chance of getting a pen on the first shot because right there, there are three pens and six total things in the bucket. And now we're assuming that something was taken out. So this is our second step because now we're taking a marker out. So we're assuming we took a pen on the first try, so there'll be still be two markers, but now there'll only be five items. So there's a two out of five chance that you're going to pick one marker. And we're going to multiply. So you multiply the numerators. Three times two is six, and six times five is, is 30. So the probability that this will happen is six out of 30. And we could reduce that, although we don't need to, to three out of 15, or one out of five. But here they even write it as 6 out of 30. And the key here is to look for that we lost one total item when we took that initial pen out of the bucket. Because then there's only 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 items left. In, in other videos I talk about why multiplying might make sense for probability. In this video I'm just going over the, the procedure. Right? I hope it helped.